Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. Um, I've always been very interested in how architecture evolves, how it's been reappropriated and recycled throughout cultures and over time. And as an architect, observing and documenting these historical curiosities has always played an essential part in the development of my own work, which centers around the melding of traditional functions and aesthetics with contemporary technologies and sensibilities. So naturally, I've always um, thought of travel as central to this endeavor. A few years ago, I was able to go to Andalusia in southern Spain to document and analyze the architectural histories of the Arabic conquest of the Iberian Peninsula. This was a period of 500 years of intense cultural exchange that resulted in a flourishing of the arts and sciences while much of the rest of Europe was still in the Dark Ages. Last year, I was able to take another trip and travel what was known as the Northern Silk Road. It was one of the few limited geographic passages connecting Europe to the Far East. And for years I had wanted to do this path, particularly because it was such a crucial bridge connecting extremely diverse artistic and architectural traditions. So for two and a half months, I was able to travel between Uzbekistan and Xi'an in central China, uh, one of the ancient Chinese capitals and the terminus of all roads leading east. So I'm going to start in Samarkand, the mythic capital of the empire of Timur, one of the greatest conquerors of Central Asia, who flourished during the 13th and 14th centuries. Although he was extremely brutal and destructive, he was also a great patron of the arts, oftentimes transporting craftsmen from one place to another to build grand projects in Uzbekistan. If you look at the Shahizinda complex, for example, one of... Uh, great necropolis built between the 11th and the 19th centuries. It contains some of the most complex three-dimensional glazed tiling in all of Central Asia. You can actually see the signatures of the Persian craftsmen inscribed onto the structures. But as we began to travel more, I saw that it actually really greatly resembled a lot of the very early mausoleums found in Kyrgyzstan and in Bukhara, which both feature extremely intricate brickwork that was built way before the technology of glazing ever arrived in these lands. So it was amazing to see how this conqueror had forged these collaborations and brought these craftsmen together to build and provided the platform for these innovations in technology and aesthetics. Next, I'm going to jump to the Gansu province in northern China, where you'll find the Maijishan Grottoes, a collection of 200 tiny little caves carved into a rockside cliff. Most of them were pretty inaccessible after they were built, and most of them contained Buddhist statues and murals. And this was located on a main trading road, so most of them were commissioned by wealthy merchants traveling back and forth between China, Central Asia, and India. And this was at a time when Buddhism was weaving itself back and forth between one location and another. And this can clearly be seen in the form that the Buddhas take on within these caves. Some of them having Indian features, some of them having uh, Chinese features, some of them having soft, sensual curves and smiling faces, while others have far more severe characteristics and animated gestures and biting facial features. And um, it's very interesting to see how these Buddhas serve as a log of the 1500 years of artistic evolution that occurred within these lands. I'm going to end in Kashgar, a very remote city on the western spectrum of China. I arrived here from Kyrgyzstan, and um, it was a multi-day journey that was, you know, went through freezing temperatures, dirt roads, and um, border controls. And one can very easily imagine how difficult that passage might have been for merchants and travelers going by donkey or a horse or elephant. And we went through a pass that actually allows you to pass over the gigantic hills separating China from Central Asia. When we arrived in Kashgar, it was very much like a fable. It was a very, very strange place. Um, very much in a place of uncertainty, fluctuating between the modernity and 
a very lively antiquity, I would say. Um, when we arrived there, actually many parts of the old town, which are still being inhabited, were being torn down to make way for contemporary structures. And what remained was a very encapsulated living museum of sorts. And in this case, there was very li little room for reappropriation of the existing history because there was no room for nostalgia and they opted for erasure. This is the hope that I have for my own work, actually. After traveling and seeing these places firsthand, I realized that history is at one's disposal and this is what my work strives to be about. It's having the facility of using and working with the histories and stories of these heritages and transforming them into something that might one day be called today's modernity. Thank you.